Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta, and today we are going to understand how to split the data in support vector machines. Support vector machine performs a classification based on the concepts of decision planes. They define the decision boundaries. A decision plane is one that separates between a set of objects having a different class memberships. The objective of a hyperplane is to maximize the margin between the two classes. The vectors that are used for classification are known as hyperplane. A support vector machine is a supervised machine learning algorithm that can be employed for both classification and regression purposes. Support vector machine is highly preferred by many as it produces a significant accuracy with less computation power. Support vector machine can be used for both regression and classification tasks, but normally it is used in classification objectives. You can see here that these are the two groups, one indicated by circle and another indicated by crosses. The two points, data points, which are nearer to each other becomes the support vector. And the objective is to maximize the distance between them. And this distance is known as margin. And the plane which separates them is known as a hyperplane. Sometimes it is not easy to separate two class memberships very easily. So for this, the objects are to be rearranged and it is known as mapping or transformation. The original objects can be transformed or mapped using the kernel tricks. Kernels are the functions which transform the low dimensional input space into higher dimensional space. The mapping will continue into higher and higher dimensions until a hyperplane can be formed to segregate it. That is, it converts not separable problem to a separable problem. These functions are called kernels. It is mostly useful in non-linear separation problems. You can see here when it is not possible to uh, separate the things in two dimensional space with the help of kernel, kernel functions, the points will be taken in higher dimensions to segregate. The kernel functions available in rapid minor are linear, RBF, poly, and others. RBF and poly are used for non linear hyperplane. The kernel function represents a dot product of input data points mapped into higher dimensional feature space. Depending upon various kernel, we have radial basis, polynomial, linear, hyperbolic, and others. Now, how we can do this in rapid minor? Let us see. First of all, we will load the data set. Part one, we will connect it. Press the play button. You can see here age gender, chest pain type, resting blood pressure, cholesterol, fasting blood sugar, resting ECG, max HR, exercise, old pig, ST slope, and a patient having a heart disease or not is considered as an attributes. It is not necessary that all these attributes are a matter of my interest and therefore I will have to select some attributes. So I will activate the operator which is select attribute. I will drop it here. I'll go here in subsetting. Select the attributes. Now I'll select age, cholesterol, fasting blood sugar, heart disease, old peak, resting blood pressure. Apply. Make sure that this attributes does not contain any categorical value. I'll go here. Now set the row. Supervised learning. Uh, sorry, the support vector machine is a part of a supervised learning where you have to specify the target variable. And therefore, my target variable is heart disease. Make it sure target role is classified as label. Now, I'll have to split the data. First of all, let me arrange this so that I can get more space here. Select the data, uh, split the data operator, select that, drag it and drop it here. Activate the operator, go in enumerations. 
We want to divide the data into 70% training data, 0.7 and 30% testing data. Press OK. Now this 70% will go into support vector machine algorithm. So I'll pick up the algorithm and I'll drop it from here, drop it here. Next, the model which is being prepared is apply the model. And I'll keep it here. I'll disconnect this spline. The train model will enter into the apply model and the testing data will be will sorry. The testing data will enter the unlabeled. The performance of the model will be evaluated on the basis of testing data. So the performance is activated. I'll connect label with label performance with the result. I can run the analysis with this operators also, but I want to specify the threshold. The threshold is the chance of happening event that is in category, the heart disease, if I talk about heart disease, yes and no, the chance of having a heart disease and not having a heart disease. So I want to specify the threshold. So for this, I'll activate the create threshold operator. I'll drop it here. After this is being done, my first class is Create threshold. I'll let you specify what is my first class and what is my second class. So I'll write down here yes and here no. Now I'll say apply the threshold. I'll pick up the threshold from here. Now I'll disconnect this spline, this spline from here. And this lab will enter into example. This will enter into through that is applying the threshold. This example will enter into the label. This model will enter into the result. Right? So we are ready for the analysis. Now press the play button and you will get the. Now there is a problem. It's a reporting bug which we have got. No problem. Let us see what is the problem which we are facing. Now the problem here is that in the original data set, the things have been written N capital and Y capital. And here we have specified in small. And that is the, uh, that is the problem which has been created. No need to worry. Make it Y capital. And this also N small. N capital, sorry. Run. You can see the error is gone. Now let us try to interpret this out. First thing which you should go now, because we are evaluating the performance of the support vector machine, we want to see how much is the classification accuracy which we have achieved. So 107. Basically, a patient was not having a heart disease and the prediction of the algorithm is also that he is not having the heart disease on the basis of the attributes which are being considered. Here, a person was having a heart disease and the algorithm also predicted that yes, on the basis of these attributes, he or she should be having a heart disease. So 107 plus 83 are correctly classified cases. So 107 plus 83 divided by the total number of cases give me the classification accuracy and it is 69%. These are misclassified cases. It means that the patient was having a heart disease, the algorithm predicted not having. Here, a person was not having a heart disease, the algorithm predicted that it is he or she is having a heart disease. So, the classification accuracy is 69%. Now, again, we will go in SVM and we'll try to use the higher models. Let us make this radial and increase the gamma and try to make it pi and this seem to be 
0.5. Let us run it. And again, we will go in performance factor. So by increasing the C as well as this gamma, we are not able to increase the accuracy and therefore we will restrict ourselves to the vanilla dot that is a pure radial function. Let us see in polynomial. Let us run it. Are there any changes which are happening? Put in performance vector. Our accuracy is increasing by 70 percentage. So this is a way you can evaluate that what is a combination, right combination, which you should consider for getting better and better accuracy. The researcher will, will have to take a call that what combination should be considered. But in the next videos, we are going to discuss that there is a optimizing parameter operator also by which you can decide that which optimal combination should be considered to increase the accuracy in the model. For more videos on Rapid Miner, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can see my previous videos where I already uploaded the theoretical part of the support vector machine. You can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter.